Welcome back. The latest smartphones have impressive high resolution sensors that can capture amazing levels of detail. In this video, we're going to compare the S23 Ultra's 200 megapixels to the iPhone 14 Pro's 48 megapixels. I've seen some similar videos and I don't think others are covering the full story here. Let's dive in. On paper, the S23 Ultra has four times the pixels compared to the iPhone 14 Pro. But does that give it an edge on detail? Not necessarily. When comparing resolution, we need a dynamic scene with tons of detail and plenty of light. For this video, I found this location overlooking Los Angeles. First, let's take a look at the iPhone image. Keep in mind that the only way to capture at the full 48 megapixels is to use ProRAW which unfortunately will give us massive files. This is how the image looks without any edits. And overall, it's pretty good. Let's zoom into the skyline here. There's obviously plenty of detail and nice sharpness on these buildings. We can easily count the number of floors on many of them. Now let's look at the S23 Ultra at 200 megapixels. Immediately, we can see higher contrast in the shaded areas with these trees and the colors are a bit more vibrant. If we zoom into the same buildings, it also looks quite impressive. Is it four times better? Not quite. Let's take a look side by side with the iPhone on the left and Galaxy on the right. We'll zoom into these buildings with orange roof tiles. If you look closely, you can see a bit more detail on the right. The iPhone just didn't have the resolution to show the tile structure, and it doesn't quite look right. And the story continues across the image. If we go to this tree in the foreground, it's clear the iPhone is a bit more mushy with the Samsung picking up a bit more detail in the individual leaves. So why are people finding iPhone 14 Pro images more detailed? Well, I think the answer is right in front of us. There seems to be heavy processing with ProRAW to create a sharp image. And we can see an example of this with these branches. They almost appear white and over sharpened with the iPhone, when in reality, they obviously were closer to the Samsung's light brown color. Now a bonus for those of you that are curious. Here's the S23 Ultra's 50 megapixel image. It's still quite detailed at less than half the size. Not a bad trade-off. But that's not all. There's more to the story. Let's try another location here, now facing the iconic Hollywood sign. Also, if you're enjoying this video, make sure to hit like. Here the iPhone shot is looking strong. Even the colors are better than what we saw before. If we zoom into the sign, we see it clearly, and we have a good view of the tower above it. Now let's take a look at the 200 megapixel Samsung image. This looks quite good overall, similar to the iPhone. Let's zoom in. Oh no, what is going on here? We have this strange green border at the edge of the sky and the letters themselves look a bit blurry. My fellow photographers out there know that this is a common lens issue when you're trying to capture bright objects next to darker ones. The 200 megapixel mode clearly has some limitations here. But what about 50 megapixels? Nice. Now this looks much better. Closer to the iPhone image. Allowing the 200 megapixel sensor to combine four pixels into one meant it was able to resolve this tricky lighting situation. So in the end, what did we learn? Well, three things. One, we know that the S23 Ultra's 200 megapixel sensor is indeed able to capture more detail than the iPhone 14 Pro in the right conditions. Two, the Samsung sensor is new and it has some limitations, making the 50 megapixel mode a great alternative and honestly what I would use most of the time. And three, software updates in the coming months will likely improve this performance. More to come on that. This was a test of unedited images. In a future video, we will push image quality to the max with raw files, with Pro Raw versus Expert Raw. Make sure you're subscribed to see that coverage. So what do you think? For those of you with these phones, have you been happy with the high resolution images? And if you don't have one, are you impressed with the latest in smartphone cameras? Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.